In this video, I'll talk about Pareto efficiency without including the stuff about Edgeworth Box. I'll try to squeeze most of his definition uh, by looking at a couple of questions. Hopefully, that will clear some stuff up. All right, so the definition, Pareto efficiency, a situation where no individual can be better off without making someone else worse off. Let's try to take a look at such a situation. There are 10 books. B and Ratchet like books. That is, they prefer having more books. Determine if the following allocations are Pareto efficient. We have the case one. B has four and Ratchet has six books. Now, how do we check if something is Pareto efficient? Let's try to make B better off in this case. For B to get better off, B will have to take books from Ratchet, right? Now, taking books from Ratchet will make B better off. But then Ratchet will lose his books. That will make Ratchet worse off because he has fewer books. What if we take books from B and give it to Ratchet? Then Ratchet will be better off, but again, B will be worse off. So there is no way to make someone better off without making someone else worse off, right? Which was also, if you notice, our definition for Pareto efficiency. So yeah, this is a Pareto efficient allocation. On to the next one. B has zero and Ratchet has 10. Now again, in order to make B better off, we'll have to take books from Ratchet. That will definitely make Ratchet worse off. And we can't really take anything from B because he doesn't have anything. Again, if you'll notice, this is a Pareto efficient allocation, which kind of seems unfair for B, but do know that Pareto efficiency does not really care about equity. There is no whatsoever relationship of Pareto efficiency with equity. Anyway, hope you're getting a hang of this. Let's keep moving. Let's take a look at another concept, Pareto improvement. It's defined as a new situation where some individuals will be better off without making someone else worse off. So if there is room for Pareto improvement in a situation, that means that situation is obviously not Pareto efficient. Let's try to make sense of this using another example. So in this case, there are 10 chocolate bars and five people, including Ratchet and B. Everyone prefers having more chocolate bars except for Miko. Miko actually prefers fewer bars. Determine if the following allocations are Pareto efficient. We have the first case, everyone has two bars each. So that means five people have two chocolate bars each. That's two, 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 two. Let's assume this is Miko and the last one is Ratchet. So Miko actually wants fewer bars, right? So let's say Miko gives a bars to Ratchet. Our distribution now becomes 0, 2, 2, 2, 4. Again, this is Miko and this is Ratchet. Now do notice, Miko prefers fewer bars, right? So Miko actually wants fewer bars. So she is better off in this distribution. And Ratchet prefers more bars. So Miko is better off. Ratchet is better off. And these three people are not worse off as well. Hang on a minute. That is a Pareto improvement. So if a Pareto improvement is possible, that means this original situation is not Pareto efficient. Not Pareto efficient. On to the next one. Ratchet has 10 bars. Again, Ratchet has 10. 10 similar case. Now Mika has zero, obviously. So she's as happy as she can be. And if Ratchet decides to share any of his chocolate bars with the rest, he will definitely be worse off. So there's no room for Pareto improvement. This is Pareto efficient. All right, hope you got a hang of this now. I'll see you in the next one.